Hey y'all, Joe here from Southern Coastal Cooking. Uh, this afternoon I kind of wanted to start a, a new video series, so to speak. Uh, some of the other channels that I enjoy watching, other YouTube friends, they um, have um, question and answer videos, basically. And what they do is they have, um, they talk about, you know, a lot of the, the questions you see in, in the comment sections of our videos, a lot of times you don't get a chance to to answer them all and stuff like that and, and talk about it in detail you know while you're typing so what they've done what I want to do is maybe about once a week have a video to where I answer certain questions that um, that you might have um, I think how I'm going to format is that uh, you know this week being the first episode I'm going to talk about a particular topic but if, you're, if there's other topics things you have questions about just post it in the comments and I'll go through there and print that out or whatever, maybe read it next week or something like that and get to that. So um, let's see. What I was going to cover uh, this week for the first episode is I've been getting a lot of people ask, you know, Joe, what kind of smoker do you like best? You know, uh, what uh, what is what is your favorite? Is it the Yoder? Is it, you know, you're cooking on these new cookers, the Kamado style or the pit, uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the barrel house cookers? stuff like that so um you know i would have to say the most use for me that that i'm the most used to i would guess um that i, I see fits into more of the stuff that i do has been the the, the uh yoder the the 640 y 640 yoder smokers uh cooker and you know with the pellets i mean it's just so simple you set it forget it pretty much um you can, a wide variety of pellets out there different flavors uh woods and stuff like that and i really enjoy that cooker you know that's uh it's one of my my real um uh, just favorite pieces that i have you know uh other than that i'll talk a little bit more about the other cookers or smokers that i have you know i start out um with the old weber was my first um uh, first smoker y'all remember it i had the weber kettle the 22 inch kettle and i had that uh cajun bandit remember the stacker kit on there and that was great you know getting started out you know you start out for a few hundred bucks and then you know it, it was a learning curve with that though you had to adjust your vent on the bottom and the top and you had a lot of full smoke flavor with that you know too because you burn all the charcoal or, uh, you got your wood chunks and stuff like that you had to kind of watch it to make sure that uh, you didn't get too much smoke let's see after that i moved to the master bill um, little cabinet smoker electric smoker that thing was great in its own right i still say and everything has you know what it does best you know for instance uh that um that little the Weber I had, you know, with the with stack kit and everything, I put out some of the best, which I put out some great briskets, but one of the best briskets I ever had, and I forget I did on that, but it was very tedious. You know, staying up all night with it, doing all kind of, you know, adjusting and everything. So, yeah, that was good, but uh, back to the master build, okay? The master built was great because it was another almost set and forget thing. You dial that temperature in, it was just like an oven in there. You put your wood chips in. I even started adding a little charcoal to it just to get some of that char, you know, in there with the flavor of the smoke. I learned that from old TNT barbecue. But it was good. Um, it very much excelled at uh, what I call, uh, let's see, just uh, giving something a kiss of smoke, so to speak, casseroles. You take like a, uh, a chicken casserole or something that's already been cooked pretty much, but you, know, you had it in, in, in the refrigerator, you're saving it for the next day, you want to take it to church or something like that. Put that in that master bill. Heat it up with some smoke chip, up with some wood chips. It would give it the ultimate smoke, just, just enough smoke. It really imparted a good, clean smoke flavor. Now, the downside to it, you didn't really have any smoke ring just the way it worked. There was no fire burning inside of there. It was just in the wood smoldering with the, with the burner. So in order to have the components that you really need for a smoke ring, a real smoke ring, not an artificial, you know, that you can use nitrates and stuff like that. But uh, you do need a fire to produce the, the uh, chemical reaction that does that. So uh, that's why you don't have a smoke ring in the uh, in the master build like that, you know. Now, I know I've mimicked a little bit of smoke ring in some of my videos where I put some charcoal in there and had it to where it catch on fire a little bit and was able to get something, but nothing like what you get on, like, the Yoda or something like that. Um, 
from there, I remember I went to the, the small, uh, what was it, the little Traeger Travel. It was, it was the tailgater. That was a cool little cooker. Uh, you can cook a pork butt in there. You can handle one pork butt, smaller pork butt, perfectly. And that, that was good. Uh, the problem, though, with the Traegers, though, there was such a thin metal, you know. Uh, you didn't hold heat near like the Yoda does, you know. It just, uh, and you would have these burnout things to where it would actually be cycling the pellets in, and the pellets might go out or something like that, and it'd start pouring a bunch of pellets down in the burn pot, or either the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the pellet hopper would suck dry down in the middle. You'd have like a vortex or, you know, just a little hole to where everything fell in the middle and you had pellets all around it, and that would cause it to go out. And that was a real pain. So, uh, but, you know, for what it was, for the price and the small, you know, it was a good little cooker. I enjoyed that. It introduced me to pellet cooking, you know, pellet smoking. So, uh, you know, next step, uh, what was my next step? I guess it was the Yoder. Love that Yoder, man. That that thing is great. Just heavy as a tank. You know, really held heat really good. Um, the hardest thing for me with the Yoder was to just trust it, trust the temperature uh, dial on there and all that stuff. You know, a lot of guys, me included, would put temperature probes all over the place. And, and you know, we catch a cold pocket that was right up next to the meat. I'm like, oh, my temperature's off, you know. Or, or you know, you got a probe up here. And, because the convection and everything going in there, that temperature over there on, on your, your thermocoupler or on, on, on the, the showing, uh, just go by that pretty much. Uh, typically, I'd say you go by that minus, on mine, minus about 10 degrees. You can sit about 10 degrees hot uh, than you want to be cooking, you know, so... Uh, a lot of guys, you know, just had fits that, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to do all this temperature, but you don't understand the convection cooker where, where all the air is moving and everything else, and then you've got cold air coming from the meat. That's something I have learned. Uh, you know, with, with you have a cold air bubble when you first put your meat in there. You know, it's radiating cold air, so that is going to throw your probes off, but it's not going to throw the main probe off there, the brain there in the yoder, so... Uh, Man, the thing was great. I mean, I've started just not worrying about throwing the meat in there. Sometimes now I don't even put a probe in the meat. You know, I pretty much know it by time. I just let it go, let it roll, go to bed, don't worry about it. Um, I'm about to start trying some new pellets out in it. Uh, I've got a friend that uh, that uh, sent me some pellets from a new company. I can't wait to try those. There's some like orchard cherry pellets. I'm gonna have to run those in the cooker. Uh, let's see. After that, you know, the uh, the grill dome. Uh, man, I would wanted to cook on a Kamado for so long. You know, everybody's talking about the big green egg and Kamado Joe and everything like that. And uh, the grill dome was awesome, you know. And I mean, we still got it. And, of course, I'll still cook on it from time to time. But, you know, the the amount of heat that it could hold with nothing escaping those thick, 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 you know, uh, ceramic walls. I mean, it was the perfect cooker. To me, in my opinion, and I still have more to learn, and I think of some of the other channels, I've heard them talk about it too, those cookers are a little bit better for the uh, upper, let's say, 375, 350, 300, I'll say, 325, 300 and up cooks. Uh, on the real low and slow stuff, when, when you're trying to maintain a 225 or something like that, or a 250, you tend to get a little bit of soot because you're, you're kind of starving your fire from oxygen. You're cutting down so much, you know. I mean, it's just such an efficient cooker is what I mean. It's sealed so much and it's so thick that that heat just tends to build up in it. So uh, I'm going to play around with that. I mean, it still made great Q, don't get me wrong. It just cooks a little faster, cooks a little bit hotter. Um, I mean, you saw the stuff that I did. I mean, even put a you know, $200 Wagyu brisket in there. So, uh, I mean, it, it, it was good. So, uh, you know, I was happy with it. Downfalls, I guess you would say. Um, you know, the cleanup kind of, um, you know, you get in there, you, know, you really got to kind of take grates out and get your little vacuum in there and clean out, you know. Although, I mean, if you're just somebody who cooks every few weekends, it, it, nothing, no, it's not bad at all. But me, you know, I was doing two cooks a week with it and, and stuff like that. And I guess I'm just so spoiled, you know, when I came from cooking on the Yoder, you know, it's so easy to clean. You just pop the thing out of there, and a little vacuum cleaner right there and just suck the ash out. But uh, anyway, um, 
you know, getting it started wasn't, wasn't bad. It had that little that hot iron that I put down in there. So uh, I still, I mean, I love it. Uh, I suggest to anybody who is a Kamado cook, because I've cooked on the Big Green Egg and I've cooked on some other ones before at friends' houses. Um, I, they didn't hold the temperature like the, that um, the grilled on did. Um, I don't know if it was just because they were smaller or what, you know, or the thickness of the sides. But uh, I mean, that grilled on wood, it would get to temp and that sucker would hold. You know, it held pretty good. Uh, last but not least, of course, my barrel house vertical cooker that I'm doing videos with now. Uh, it's blown me away so far. It's just the main fact is the ease of use. I mean, you start your little fire in the bottom of this thing, okay? You know, the detachable bottom, you see me, and I put my coals in there, take about a third of them out, uh, start them, pull them back in. And, wow, I mean, that thing gets hot. Uh, it gets to about 350, 370. It's a hotter cook as well, so so there's no 225 on this guy. Uh, you're, you're cooking around, you know, 325, 350, maybe, up to, maybe even up to 375 sometimes. But, uh, you know... Wow, does it, it it holds that temperature right there. It gets going quick, and the results have been amazing. I did the, the chicken, I mean the juicy, juicy chicken, perfect on the outside. The bottom wasn't burnt because it actually, the way they've got it designed, it creates a convection as well with that smoke pouring out the top, sucking air up from the bottom down there. So um, really, really good. I mean, that, it's been so cool. The, the pork loins from last night turned out awesome. I mean, I really don't have any negatives uh, yet that I've found about it. I mean, I guess, you know, the only negative just about like any charcoal cooker or something is there is going to be a, a little bit of cleanup, you know, there, and you got to get your charcoal. But, I mean, it, this is very nominal. I mean, because that bottom piece comes off and it's like that big, I can take it, dump it in the in, in the in the in the garden or, you know, wherever I'm throwing the stuff away, you know, after it's cooled, of course, spray the water on it. But, you know, I mean, it's so easy how it comes apart. You're not sitting there fighting this big old smoker and trying to dump everything out, you know. Uh, so that makes stuff very, very easy. Um, next step I want to try with it, I've got that smoking wedgie, you know, that you put the pellets in. It's like a little pellet holder. I want to try putting some pellets in there on top of the charcoal, using them for my smoke. I think that would be pretty good. but And the room's amazing how much food you can fit in, fit in there. I was kind of worried about it when I first got it. It was, it was so small as far as, you know, diameter. But, I mean, it's uh, you can hang plenty of food in there, you know. So uh, that's really cool. But uh, those are the questions I want to touch on today, you know, kind of, uh, you know, the smoker stuff. I, other people have been talking about, are you going to go, uh, excuse me, you going to go back to the Yoda? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I want to try all these different, you know, I want to try as many types of, of barbecue pits and cookers as I can because I want to get experience with it all. I want to experience the, the different, um, you know, techniques and stuff like that. Um, you know, of course, you know, I think the Yoder will always kind of be my staple, you know, go-to piece, you know, if I had, you know, to say, you know, that's going to be my main cooker. But, um, you know, oh, uh gas grill i guess i'll throw that in there i had that napoleon gas grill that thing was great you know for what was that sear station on thing was amazing you know it's sear the steaks and all that kind of stuff uh, really good in a charcoal tray i need to try it sometime with the charcoal tray you can actually use it as a charcoal grill but um yeah it, it was great some stuff i'd like to try in the future i mean I, i'd love to uh to cook on a like one of these yoder stick burners you know like a yoder wichita or something like that or kingsman um you know, I just, oh gosh, I don't have the time. You know, that that's something that you do have to babysit it all night, you know. and um, Which, you know, I get off work on Saturdays usually. You know, it's late, you know, about 8 o'clock or so by the time I get home and get going. So, I mean, if I started to cook like that at 8 o'clock at night, I'd be up all night. I mean, there'd just be, uh, I don't know. I might talk to some of the guys that have them. I know T-Roy over at T-Roy Cooks has got one. I don't I'm see what kind of time frame it would take. You know, you stay up all night with it. And um, another thing, you got to have wood. You know, somebody you know, bring the wood, split wood, and stuff like that. Post oak, I guess. But, I mean, that's supposed to be the real deal. You know, you should get some great cooks on. So I would like to try that. But y'all, please, um, you know, put down in the comment section uh, anything that you would uh, like for me to answer maybe for the next video I'll try to pick some of those and theme the next video this question and answer but I uh, hope that um, answered some of your questions I'm trying to think if there was any other kind of 
cookers that I've had that I've cooked on. I can't think of anything right now. If I left something out, y'all let me know. But I appreciate y'all. Y'all please uh, like my videos, sub my channel. God bless y'all. Have a good one, and uh, we'll see you soon.